Well, we're going to be using Virtual Courseware Earthquake to uh, learn about a few things in working with some seismic wave data for this unit. So I needed to show you how to use this software that's online. Uh, first, of course, by going to sciencecourseware.org slash EEC slash earthquake. Please do this if you're using school computers. Please make sure that you only do this on Internet Explorer because it doesn't want to work well with Chromebooks and Google Chrome. It will work on a Google Chromebook if you use Internet Explorer and you do a few key steps that I'm going to show you right now. So Internet Explorer is what I'm using. Epicenter and magnitude. Here it's going to ask you some stuff. Say run this time. It's an issue with Java. So run this time. Next. It asks you, do you want to run? Say yes. This is very important. Click do not block. This says it's potentially unsafe, but everything is fine. It's a disagreement between Google and Java, so it's showing it as a possible unsafe component, but it's really not. So click don't block. If you don't do this, it's not going to work for you, and you'll be very frustrated. So please click don't block. You'll know you've done it right when these three buttons appear. If these three buttons do not appear, you've done something wrong, click out of this window, click out of that window, and start Internet Explorer again. So, start activity. You don't need this window, so get rid of it. And now we're on to the main window. So, here we go. Let's start an earthquake. You'll do that by clicking this button and click Trigger Earthquake. Very violent. Now. This earthquake, as you saw on that map, this earthquake has been registered by all nine of these recording stations. But as you know, we only need data from three recording stations for us to be able to locate the, uh, to locate a certain spot on any map. Well, we're going to try to figure out where this earthquake occurred exactly. So that is using the method of triangulation to find the epicenter of an earthquake. So, we're going to pick one of these stations and gather some data. All right, immediately, and I love that this happened because you'll find this all the time. Here, we're going to start working with some wave data, but this wave is absolutely ginormous. It doesn't even fit on our screen, so we can't use this to make any measurements. So if you see this, go up here to the left, and it's the drop-down menu where it lets you pick different stations to work with. Just pick a different station. Station 2, my goodness, that's huge. Okay, let's try another station. Station 3, there we go, that's a lot better. So we're going to be able to measure this. Although this is a little small, that's okay. We've got a zoom tool over here to the right, and that'll be able to uh, let us zoom in on some information. First, we're going to start by finding the amount of time that took place from the very beginning of the first P wave so click at the very beginning of that first wave and drag to the very beginning of the S wave. And right there it says 51 seconds. So down here in my journal is where I'm going to record my data. I'm working with station number 3. And my first, uh, my lag time that I just measured was 51 seconds. Next, I want to know the amplitude, the maximum amplitude of the wave. So I'm going to click the middle line. But this time, I'm going to drag up, and I'm measuring in millimeters the height, or the amplitude, of this wave. And that is 5.9 millimeters. And I'm going to record that here. Finally, I'm going to need to know how far away from this station the earthquake occurred by clicking this button right here. Now, I'm going to use this lag time that I have found, and I'm going to click and drag the red line until this reading right here says 51 seconds. So click and drag, and we're at 51 seconds. Follow this line, follow it down, and this is telling me how far away the earthquake occurred from the current station that I'm working with. So it occurred at almost 500 kilometers away, 498. Now, how powerful was the earthquake? Well, to know that, uh, or to, to, uh, to be able to determine that, we're going to need to use some data that we've already uncovered. And we're going to find its magnitude on the Richter scale. So, 
This is asking me over on this side, what was the distance in kilometers? And I just measured that, and it was 498. So I'm going to click this red line and drag it all the way up to 498. Then over here, it's asking me what were the amplitude in millimeters. Well, I recorded, or I uh, uh, measured that as well, and that's 5.9. So I'm going to click and drag up until it says 5.9. Five, uh, Did I say 4.9? I meant to say 5.9. So 5.9. Now, where this red line crosses my center slide here, that is the magnitude on the Richter scale. So this line is 5.0. That small one is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And it looks like it's crossing right at 5.5. So that's what I'm going to put in right here. A special note. You're going to do all of these things for two more reporting stations. When you get all three magnitudes, a little clue to let you know if your data is accurate or if you're moving in a, the right direction is if your magnitudes are within 0.1 of each other. If they're all three exactly the same, that's even better. So for now, I'm going to pause and I'm going to go back and do uh, the data collection again for two other stations. And then I'm going to come back to show you this last little bit right here. And we're going to see if we were right. So I've completed all of the pieces of data now. I've gotten some data from station 3, station 5, and station 9. Now, oh by the way, magnitudes are all exactly the same, so I'm moving in a good direction. Now I need to be able to figure out where the earthquake occurred. For that, I'm going to start with my triangulation button, and my data in my journal is going to stay right where it is. And that's good because I need it. So I'm going to start drawing my circles. Start dragging from one of your stations until the distance matches your calculated distance. What was my distance away from station 3? 498. Here's station 3. I'm going to click and drag, and now I get a circle. And I'm going to stop dragging when it says 498, which is a long way away. There it is, 498. So here's my first arc. So my earthquake occurred exactly somewhere along this arc but I'm not really sure where because I need more information. So station 5 says 236. Here's station 5. Click, drag, 236. Well, this crosses the first arc here and crosses the other arc down here somewhere off my screen. So chances are this is where my earthquake occurred, but I'm going to confirm it with station 9, which says 513. So click, drag, and let go at 513. All right, right on. There we are. So here is where my earthquake occurred. But I'm going to need to place a marker before I can move on. So I press this little E button, and it gives me an E circle. I'm going to move this and put this exactly as best I can where my earthquake occurred. Because how do I know where? Well, we're going to use latitude and longitude. And my next button is going to give me a map with latitude and longitude lines on it. That means it's going to erase my three arcs. So I need this marker so I know where to be looking on my map. Watch. Okay, I click the map button. My arcs disappear. So that's why I need my marker to stay right there. All right, latitude. Here we go. Here are my latitude lines. This one's 33 degrees. This one's 34. This one's 35. This one's 34. That's 34 and a quarter, 34 and a half. 34 3 quarters, that's almost 35. So down here I'm going to say 34, and I'm going to say 90, so like 0.90, because it's really close to 35 degrees north. And by the way, that says N, so this should say N. Now, longitude lines, they're the ones that go up and down. This solid line right here is 117 degrees, this one over here is 118 degrees. 117 and a quarter, 117 and a half. This looks like it's between 117 and a quarter and 117 and a half going this way. So right here, I'm going to say 117 and I'm going to say 0 0.30. Notice, please, I have not put any uh, decimals in these boxes, just the remainder without the decimal. This would be 0 0.90, but I don't use the point, just the numbers. And since this says W, this will say W. All right, we're almost to the very end. This is the nerve-wracking point. 
I'm about to click verify answers. If any of my boxes are wrong, let's say like right here for example, you'll see that. It will say, nope, you're not right, and by doing that it's going to put three stars right here next to whatever in your boxes is incorrect. So what do you do? Erase everything in that box and change it and then click verify answers. Again, if it's still wrong, three more stars will show up. If it's right, hopefully you get a good message. So let's see. Okay, one or more of your answers is incorrect. These answers are marked with stars and there they are. So 34.9 is not right. So let's think, this is 34, that's 35. 34.75, 35 is right there. Maybe I went a little too far. Let's try 0.8. So let's see what we've got. There it is. All right, so I was just over by one tenth. So I fixed my data, I pressed verify answers to try again, and I have successfully completed this earthquake activity. You need to become very comfortable with this software because uh, later you're going to have an opportunity as I go right here you're gonna have an opportunity to try this as a quiz and that will be a grade in Infinite Campus so be very familiar with this and hopefully you will be very good at what you're trying to do good luck